Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Grady Pasqual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Ms. Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more. Afterward from our sponsors, please stay with us. Hearing none, the four uh, foresighted uh, personalities are hereby cited in contempt. So ordered. A Senate committee on Thursday cited in contempt for officials of Socorro Bayanihan Services Inc. or SBSI. This include its leader, J. Renz Quilario, also known as Senor Aguila, Mamerto Galanida, who is a former school superintendent of the Philippine Education Department, and a three-term mayor of Socorro Town, Karen Sanico and Janet Ahok, who are said to be advisors of Senor Aguila. Senator Risa Ontiveros made this motion to cite in contempt SBSI officials after Quilario and others repeatedly denied that child marriages took place in Sitio Kapihan despite testimonies by victims. Si Senor Aguila ang uh, ni Anya. Mag, magpares. Oh, magpa, magpapares sabi uh, ikaw uh, paired ka nitong isa so, hindi daw sila pwedeng uh, humindi dahil just naman daw kasi ang nagsasabi na yun yung pares nila. Kung hindi sila susunod, uh, may, mayroon silang paddle, may ruleta, uh, restriction, uh, restricted. Alias Coco and Renz cried during the hearing while narrating in public what really happened to them as the alleged soldiers of God. Sa marag pareha sundalo na on training. Parang para sundalo na training, Your Honor. Ano naman ang pagkakilala mo kay J. Renz Quilario, kay Senor Aguila? Siya po na ang ginoo. Sinabi niya sa siyang Panginoon. Bakit ka ba tumakas sa kapihan? Kay wala may eskwela. Kaya may bisip. Dwelpa yung edad. Di pagyan mo kung ibubusuhan. Uh, wala kasi silang pag-aaral, Your Honor, at 12 na yung edad niya, hindi pa siya marunong sumulat. Kilario denied these allegations. Hindi yan totoo, sir. Yung mga bata, pinapayagan naman yan na lumabas. Hindi naman yan, ano, kinukulunan niya. Senator Hontivero stressed that four witnesses present in the hearing, including an actual party to such marriage, testified that there were child marriages at Sitio Kapihan. Sinutosan niyo po si Janet na kumuha po ng tabletas po yung gamot may pinainom sa akin. Kule, di ko matukoy kung anong gamot yun pero kule, so, no, Janet, Janet ako po. Tapos yun po, ininom ko naman yung gamot pero tapos ng kagabihan po is gusto ko gusto ko pong uh, maggalawin yung babae. Yun po talaga yung otos ni senior na gahasain ko na yung babae. Senator Antiveros asked Hilario and other SBSI officials if there are indeed child marriages. May child marriage ba sa kapihan? Hindi po. Hindi po nangyari. Wala ang child marriage sa uh, Madam Senator. Uh, kasi po, kung, kung meron man, kung uh, meron dapat uh, yung mga parents mismo magkukomplain. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, chairperson of the Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, believes there are human rights violations on the part of SBSI officials. So far, uh... May nakikita tayo na talagang paglabag sa mga karapatan ng mga, mga bata. So yung concern about number one, yung forced uh, marriages, forced sex, 
uh, at saka may rape pa at saka yung uh, pagbabawal na mag-aral. After the hearing, the four officials of SBSI were escorted by the Senate Sergeant at Arms personnel to a room where they will stay temporarily while the contempt order is still in effect. De La Rosa said they plan to conduct the next hearing in the town of Socorro possibly next week. Socorro na siguro. Uh, we will go there kasi mas marami silang babiyahe dito. Uh, alam mo na, hirap din sa buhay yan. Mamasahe pa pupunta dito. So tayo na pupunta doon. 560 kilograms of shabu concealed in red and golden tea bags were discovered inside boxes declared as agricultural feeds. They were seized by operatives of the National Bureau of Investigation at a warehouse in San Jose Malino Village in Mexico, Pampanga. This is a controlled operation no, uh, conducted by uh, the BOC, the PDEA, the NBI with the support and help of our uh, NICA. According to the Bureau of Customs, the shipment arrived at Subic Port, SBMA, on September 18, 2023, from Thailand, aboard the vessel SITC Sheku. Pass through um, China and then direct to Port of Subic. The NBI chemist confirmed that the substances seized from the shipment are illegal narcotics. According to PIDEA, the syndicate uses foil and other products to conceal the contraband. As you can see, there are foils, uh, chicharron, and uh, dried, fish. dried fish. So the foil is used to camouflage the items in the X-ray of our facilities in the port. Ito namang ginagamit na chicharron and uh, dried fish is uh, we are we will be conducting a study if this ang smell ito ay nakakaapekto sa pagdetect pag ng drugs ng ating mga K9. According to the NBI Task Force Against Illegal Drugs, the shipment was monitored and the identities of the personalities involved in the drug scheme were uncovered with the help of the undercover operatives who infiltrated and monitored the drug syndicate. This case started in 2020. We've been monitoring this uh, drug syndicate since 2020, so this is a three-year-long operation. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulla wants a tight watch over Subic Port in government's anti-drug campaign. Actually, Subic rin ang amin na pinpoint na source ng agricultural smuggling. That's why we have to watch over Subic. Uh, definitely, uh, may foreign involvement. It's international syndicate that we are talking about. Ano talaga, talaga, very sophisticated na to. It is a world, ano na, it's a world menace. The sea Shabu has an estimated value of 3.8 billion pesos, making it the largest drug hole in 2023. Authorities continue with follow-up operations to hold those responsible for the shipment accountable. In the meantime, a Singaporean mother and her daughter were arrested at the Philippines' main gateway Thursday after being caught with around 76 million pesos worth of illegal drugs. Airport authorities say they found 14 kilograms of suspected cocaine hidden in the suspects' bags. The suspects claim they weren't aware they were carrying narcotics. Mga, mga goods, no? We're in uh, talaga pong... Uh... Diyan po nila kinunsil, no? like yung mga cookies, at yung mga tin can cookies at yung mga canister po. No? Kung saan po ito po ay uh, kilalang pa brand po wherein uh, talaga pong sinil nila. No? And uh, isa pang maganda no? na ginawa nila no? na para talaga makunsil ng maganda is they used a, uh, a uh, plastic po that uh, would make it appear na binili ito sa duty free. Nakita po na himbis po na mga cookies at mga snacks, yung laman po ng mga tin can and canisters, uh, cocaine po yung, yung, yung nakita po na, ni, nila. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash-out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. 
If you need $25,000, $50,000, or even $100,000, now's the time. Home values are up, and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash-out refi specialist and see how much cash-out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. 901-245-4874. That's Vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very interesting, exciting, and dynamic woman um, in our community. In the, and you, you're, I think you're familiar with this lady already because she, uh, I interviewed her before. She is uh, one of the Hall of Famers, outstanding uh, Hall of Famers in uh, in our community, and um, uh, that event was uh, sponsored by the uh, Bio Times and Chicago Philippine Reports TV. And uh, we're still, um, uh, well, right, we're still idle right now. At this point after the COVID, uh, and uh, many people have been asking me about about the. Of Chicago Philippine, I mean, uh, the Philippine American Hall of Fame. But we will be back. We will be back in next year. And uh, okay, welcome back to Chicago, Miss Maria uh, Fides Balita. Right? Miss okay. Maria Fides Balita. And I, I, I just call her Fides or uh, Maria sometimes. <laughs> Two names <laughs> and um, all right, and uh, believe it or not, this lady just landed at the O'Hare Airport a, a couple of hours ago. Oh, my goodness gracious, that's how dynamic and energetic this woman is, and I I really salute her for that. Yeah, she is a, she is a CPA, and uh, let me. Uh, say something about her. She is, Maria is the founder and managing partner 
of the Maharlika, Maharlika PLLC. What is PLLC? Uh, ano po, a professional limited liability company. So it's a limited liability company for um for specific uh professions like for example CPAs or lawyers. And if you want to open a firm that is an LLC setup, uh, gusto po ng Illinois Department of Professional Regulations that it will be a PLLC. And your firm um, well, uh, provides audit and consulting services. Okay, can you, uh, please explain further. Apo. So, uh, Maharlika PLLC po is uh, formed in last year. So, we are now on our first anniversary. And we provide audit, accounting, and consulting services. Uh, the consulting services is primarily uh, assistance to management if they have some special projects or some um, uh, uh, non-attest engagements, those that are not um, going to be issuing an opinion, but management will be needing a report. The accounting services for includes bookkeeping, um, just regular setting up of books, and then audit will be if you have a 401k plan, a pension, or a government plan, or government services that you will be needing some financial statements audit either for regulatory requirements or just for use of management uh, to have comfort as to the financials that are being generated as far as the results of the operations of a company or an organization. Wow, that sounds very heavy to me, Maria. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> okay, and um, all right, with the, and this Maharli copy LLC just celebrated it's the first year anniversary. Yes, of course. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Paul. It's such a blessing. Uh, so last year it was just me, and uh, now. Uh, we have four members of the firm and we're getting ready to onboard three more individuals. And so it's really very exciting. Um, I've been getting a lot of tractions as far as uh, reaching out to clients. And uh, it's really very interesting that we also received our certification as a woman and minority owned firm, uh, which is uh, really very Good, especially with all the diversity and equity and inclusion initiatives uh, for the supplier diversity, especially for companies who will have, uh, who will want uh, supplier diversity in their programs. So that certification as a woman and minority owned firm allows me to participate in those types of solicitations. And also for contracts that are so big, um, and and the and government contracts would allow certain participations for smaller firms like our firm. Great, terrific. Um, wow, I I'm telling you, I uh, I still I really cannot understand what uh, you really are, are doing, but I know it's something that I cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> It's something for very technical, but you know, it's it's something that is uh um easy to understand and for for the people who are needing their financial uh, statements, kung halimbawa po they want to understand kumikita ba yung negosyo nila, magkano yung mga sales nila, how much are their sales, how much are their expenses, how much are their assets. So those items po the results of the operations are being presented in a financial statement para po the the businesses will know how they are doing and so our firm either prepares those financial statements for them or kami po yung nag-audit so it, it's uh, helping uh, management uh, perform it, its function with regards to the operations all right okay maria there's um a very exciting organization that uh, you are uh, you have been involved with and uh, the name of that organization is Filipino Women's Network. Filipino Women's Network, and um, the name the name itself uh, sounds so exciting. But uh, can you please tell us about the FWN in short? Thank you, Paul, for the opportunity to explain what Filipino Women's Network is. Um, I've been involved with this organization since 2019 when I received the Filipina. 
100 Most Influential Filipino Women in the World Award. Uh, the, the organization po is an awardees, it's an organization of awardees for the 100 Most Influential Filipino Women in the World. And they are the leaders in the public and private sectors for about 34 countries uh, that are selected yearly from a worldwide search. Um, the vision of the organization is to be the number one resource for leadership, personal and professional development of Filipino women worldwide. Um, and its mission uh, for is for a Filipino woman uh, leader in every sector of the economy. So we have healthcare, ako po is in finance, kayo po is in media. So we want to have like a Filipino woman leader in every sector of the economy. Um, the the exciting news po about the Filipino Women's Network is that they create this book. One of their programs is creating a book that's uh, that's about the leadership journey of the awardees. It is now a series of four books, and the dis the title of the book is Disrupt. So it's now Disrupt 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and there is the fourth book. So this was launched for the first global launch last year was in Portugal, in Lisbon. And it has been launched in Philippines in February, San Francisco in March of this year. And then uh, Toronto was August and September 14th was Los Angeles. And so that book launch is also coming to Chicago on October 14th. And Tita V, thank you so much for gracing my invitation. You will be one of our guest readers. So we have authors who are coming. Uh, somebody from Canada is coming who is also an author of Disrupt 4.0. Uh, somebody from 3.0, uh, she is from Los Angeles. The CEO of Filipino Women's Network, Marilyn Mondehar, is also coming. Um, and then we have guest readers, um, and they, uh, you are select guest readers. We have yourself, we have Gail Floresca, Teresa Icolina, and then Malve Ildefonso. Malve, she is an awardee last year, um, and then she will also be a guest reader for the Chicago uh, launch. It's very exciting, Po. It's going to be held on the Westin O'Hare in Rosemont. October 14th at 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, we encourage people to come at 3.30 so we can have some networking and some light refreshments. My goodness, sounds like a really top-notch women get together, right? Yes. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, this will really be a very exciting afternoon because, uh, because I, these women that will be attending are surely all females <laughs> and uh, I wrote about alpha female in my, in my uh, column in Diet Times last month and I think I will still be continuing it I don't know my god that really sounds so exciting I'm telling you around um, we have any number of uh, number of people uh, that are coming on that day um, that they were our our um our expected uh, authors will be I think about authors and guest readers there will be about nine or ten, and uh so the registrations are open. It's gonna be at the FFW and um summit.org events, uh and then um the registration for is thirty five dollars per person and it comes with a free book. So the reg you're basically for just buying the cost of one book, uh, but for this event you'll be able to get um, the author's reading, and then if you want to have a book signed, like your your book will be uh, autographed by the authors present, um, there will be uh, some opportunity to for book signing. There will be books that are available from all four um, for all the series. Uh, of course, there will be more books available for the 4.0 because that's the one that is being launched. And um, I just, Tita, I just wanted for, to mention the titles of the four books. So Disrupt 1.0 um, is called Filipino Women, Proud, Loud, and Leading Without a Doubt. It redefines how Filipino women in the diaspora are perceived. 
The second book, which is Disrupt 2.0, the title is Filipino Women Daring to Lead. It is an affirmation of the leadership competencies of Filipino leaders with a global mindset. And then the Disrupt 3.0 is rising. So you can see po, that the trajectory of how the leadership journeys are being captured in this literature. So Disrupt 3.0 is the leadership stories of Filipinas who have emerged as global leaders despite varying levels of challenges. And the Disrupt 4.0, which is this one that we're being launched, is Filipina women being. It reflects the trajectory trajectory of being a Filipina who she is now. So you can really see po, the, the progression from loud, proud being without a doubt. We just want to make ourselves visible. We want to have that read up, read, redefinition of who we are because we are leaders. We are not just some hidden talent. We want to be visible. We want people to see us. And so it's really very exciting times. Um, that we have this literature capturing all of these leadership journeys and 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 for us to be able to showcase to the world that Filipinas are leaders and this total of four series have over 136 authors the 4.0 we are 36 co-authors in this book and so you will learn a lot of the stories 600 pages is very much well worth the 35 dollars that you will you will buy for the registration or if you want to buy the book itself well maria i saw the book and it is really very very thick <laughs> and, uh, you know and uh, it's a series of what you're saying is that it is a series of um books which now is this is the fourth one right um yeah. 4.0 this is a series of books about the uh, um the works and um I mean, victories of the Filipino women out there, okay, yes. showing the strength and the leadership. All right. My question is, why did you choose, or the, the group, why did the uh, WN chose the name Disrupt? What, what does that mean? Yes, thank you, Paul. The disrupt means disruptors, but we're challenging the status quo. Kaya po siya disrupt is we are disruptors. We are not just, you know, silent. We are, sometimes, Paul, we have that image that, oh, Filipino women, you are shy. You're, you're, you're just putting your head down. You are not a leader. You don't have soft skills. You... You're just quiet. You're just down there, you know. But that's why we're disrupting is disrupt the status quo. We're just not happy with how people perceive us because people do not know how we really have accomplished who we are, how we have gotten a seat at the table, and we are leaders in our own right, in our own industries. And we want to use that as a platform to inspire people because some people want to see somebody who has achieved it in order to realize that, hey, if she can make it, I can too. And so it's good for people to see that we have some role models, role models that we can look up to. And, and I myself, well, when I was reading, I have the four books. I, I have all those four books and I have read stories of, of these women and they are really amazing. It's really like, sometimes I would feel, wow, these people are really, amazing. really really amazing they're magnificent women and they are really there to represent us um and it's it's just it's just very humbling to be in that book you know in it of itself is already um an amazing experience and very humbling 
to be a part of those um, women in the Disrupt series. Wow. I can't wait. But what did you say that uh, there is going, uh, it's going to be held at the Westin Hotel? It's going to be at, at the Westin um, West O'Hare in Rosemont. O'Hare, yeah. At, as, as I believe it's 16. 14? October 14. About 4 o'clock p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, please arrive early, 3.30 to 3.30 p.m. is registration and networking. And we'll have uh, some Filipino based refreshments. It sure sounds very exciting to me. I really look forward to be there. And um, well, 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 well. Uh, all the, these dynamic uh, Filipino women, uh, and I'm telling you, I, I, I might, uh, I might be too shy to. Uh, to be uh, at, uh, to be talking to some of these women because uh, I am uh, I I don't think I I'll be uh, comparable to to many of these uh, achievers. Oh, we're so, we're all we're all the same. We're all the same, Tita B. Yeah, we're all the same. Uh, Tita, I just wanted to have one more opportunity to to grab this opportunity while I have you both. So one other organization that um that I'm involved in is the International Society of Filipinos in Finance and Accounting, and this is the one organization where I was able to be recognized in the Hall of Fame, and. And yes, I, I'm familiar with this organization. I know many uh, members. Yes, and, and thank you, Paul, because this year, it marks our 10th year anniversary. That's why it is oh. so exciting because 10 years ago, we were just forming the chapter and now it's already on its 10th year. We're going to have an induction dinner and the 10th year anniversary celebration on October 15th. So that will be the following day. But it's going to be in Des Plains at the Manzo's Banquets in Des Plains, Illinois. October 15th, that's a Sunday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So Andrew, if you can remember for Andrew Guerrero, he will be the chapter president. And so this is exciting times. Members of the National Executive Board will be attending the events the um, and the induction dinner. Um, we have Edith, when Dr. Edith in Winter Halter, she will be the keynote speaker. And we also have Malve Ildefonso, who will be giving the oath to the officers. So it's very exciting. These two events, October 14th and October 15th. And this is for very much in line with the Filipino American History Month that we celebrate in October. So we're really very um, happy and proud to. Um, share and celebrate uh, our heritage wow look at you you never rest <laughs> talking about all these organizations that uh, you have been participating and you have been organizing and you have been uh, oh my god um, um i'm telling you uh, Mar maria where do you get your energy <laughs> i i think it's a uh... I think it's just a holistic uh, uh, approach to it for uh, because these organizations also um, give so much back that um, it's 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 very important that their mission and their purpose will be told uh, so that it can um, share back to the community who has given us so much as well as to who I am now and who I will go to be. Um, these organizations have helped me a lot and I have given also my, my energy and commitment. Um, but it's more of like helping each other so that our community as a whole um, will, will be uh, better. Well, well, well. What can I say? Maria Fides Balita. She is uh, your typical, believe it or not, a typical Filipino 
a woman that really is always out there, out there, helping people, helping the members of the community. And um, I'm really so proud of you, um, Maria. And I look forward to um, working with you at the Disrupt 4.0. I I cannot wait. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And, and thank you. Thank you so much for gracing our show today. And uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. Ako si Veronica. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye, Maria. Bye-bye. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need 25,000, 50,000, or even 100,000, now's the time. Home values are up and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. I have a very interesting Kababayan, uh, and uh, he's from LA, as far as LA, of course. We have uh, we have here Mr. Randy Bunal, and uh, Randy is joining us today. Um, as he, uh, his title is Chief Com Communications Officer of right. the National Asian Pacific. Um, Pacific American Women's Forum. Is that right? Yes, that's correct, Veronica. Thank you. And uh, this association, uh, in short, is also known as NAPAWF. Yeah, um, we also say NAPAWF for short. All right. Randy is here today to talk to us about a very important topic to immig Asian Im immigrants here in the United States. Welcome to our show, Randy. And you, um, first thing, uh, please tell us briefly about your background. Yeah, thank you, Veronica. Um, uh, again, my name is Randy Bunau with NAPOF. Um, I'm the Chief Communications Officer here I um, have been with the organization for about two years. Um, my personal background is um, second generation Filipino American. Um, both my parents immigrated to the US um, to Los Angeles um, in the late 1960s. Um, you know, they instilled in me um, a life of service. And because of that, um, after college, I've you know, dedicated my career um, and my working life to helping others. And so um, before NAPOF, I worked at another organization um, helping the Asian American um, Pacific Islander immigrant community in Los Angeles um, through legal services. Um, and now I'm at NAPOF as, as the chief communications officer. Okay, and uh, as the... Um, uh, communications officer of this organization, uh, um, can you please tell us um, about the recent, uh, um, well, health, health uh, introduction or um, that some Congress women introduced and um, what does it do for immigrants like us uh, it's also called in short as HEAL, H E A L. Will you please tell us about HEAL? Yeah, thanks, Veronica. So, um, earlier this summer in late July, um, NAPOF, uh, with our sister organization, the Latina Institute, 
um, worked with Congress to reintroduce the HEAL Act for Immigrant Families. Um, that stands for um, Health Equity and Access Under the Law. And um, at heart, um, it's a legislation that will expand um, healthcare access to more immigrants in this country, um, regardless of their status or how long they've been in the United States. So it's about bringing affordable quality healthcare to more people. And, you know, Veronica, as you know, um, Asian Americans and Filipino Americans are large um, immigrant communities um, in the country. And so it's something that really directly impacts our, our community. Yeah, specifically, uh, how beneficial is it going to be to, to immigrants like us? Yeah, I was thinking, um, you know, before I got, um, before I joined you today, I was reading over my notes and reading over the legislation. And I, I was thinking about, I have an aunt who um, recently immigrated um, from the Philippines um, less than five years ago. And she also works as a cashier at a grocery store. Um, she is a legal permanent resident, I'm an LPR, um, but because, um, she um, is under the five-year mark, she's not able to access um, Medicaid services. Um, and I saw her recently at a party and she had a terrible, terrible toothache. Um, her teeth um, needed uh, you know, professional dental services and uh, her job doesn't provide dental coverage. And because she's under the five-year waiting period to access federal Medicaid healthcare benefits, she's living um, very uncomfortably in a lot of pain right now. So HEAL, um, the HEAL Act for Immigrant Families would remove uh, the five-year waiting period for people like my auntie who um, are essentially working and paying into the system but can't access um, health services that she needs. Of course, uh, um, if HEAL would benefit the Asian Americans and the Pacific um, members of our group here in the, in America, uh, well, of course, it will benefit also Filipino Americans like us, right? Of course, yeah. You know, when we think about healthcare, it's not just for emergencies. Like, you know, the story I just told you was my aunt and she needs emergency dental care, but healthcare, as you know, is about regular checkups. It's about um, preventative care. Um, for women, it's about reproductive care. Um, not just when they're pregnant, um, but the life of their reproductive lives um, and getting medical services to support that. So, you know, when you have health care um, and you have um, access to regular health care to see the doctor if something hurts, to run regular tests, to monitor your 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 health, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's a quality of life issue and it helps people live better lives for themselves and their families. Okay, well, um, this was just introduced, yeah, uh, but it was not passed yet in Congress, right? No, we had a, um, a big um, reintroduction at the end of July. Um, I should mention that it was sponsored by Representatives Jayapal and Baragon in the House, and um, in the Senate, it was sponsored by Senator Cory Booker. Um, so we introduced it again in July, and I should mention that uh, next week we are having a HEAL Week of Action in Washington, D.C. Um, that uh, means that we'll be working with um, our partners at the Latina Institute, and we have staff members and organizers, AAPI women, traveling to Washington, D.C. next week to lobby and to knock on doors, to meet with representatives, to meet with other legislatures or other legislators um, telling them about their life and why um, HEAL matters to them and their families. So um, we're at an exciting point right now for the legislation. We introduced it this summer and um, our team is going to be in the halls of Congress next week, knocking on doors and you know talking to the people um, and the decision makers who can help make this rea a reality. Is, is there something we have to do as a group to uh, really get this going? What do we have yeah. to do? 
Thank you for asking um, that. And yes, so, you know, part of advocating for policies like HEAL um, is about getting the word out. So one thing we do here at NAPOF is we share uh, social media toolkits for people to um, post about HEAL, um, to post graphics about HEAL on their own social media account. You can follow NAPOF on um, social media and repost um, our advocacy um, messages around HEAL and why it matters. Um, I will say uh, the very, very first step is that if you're not already subscribed to NAPOF, you can visit our website at napwf.org and sign up for our emails. And once you are signed up for our emails, you'll be in the loop um, and you'll be part of our movement universe and you'll be getting our emails about HEAL and other activities that we're working on. And you know, sometimes we share with people not just social media toolkits, but um, we organize lobbying days, uh, marches, um, community events to uplift um, issues that matter to our community, particularly AAPI women. Wow, that's a big job. And yeah, yeah, you know, um, Veronica, I'll also say, you know, as a as a Filipino man, you know, one of the reasons I took this job, you know, I, I do it in many ways in honor of the women in my life who raised me, my Lola, my mom. My mom is the oldest of seven kids. And so as a kid, I was born in America, but I was raised in a house full of immigrants, um, full of women. Um, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen with my aunties. And so when I joined NAPOF, um, it was uh, in service of um, the people I love and, you know, the women who, who still love me to this day and, you know, help me in life. Okay, uh, one last question, Randy. Um, I was thinking that the NAPAWF group are all women. I'm wondering why their communications officer is a man like you. Yeah, um, you know, speaking to what I just said, it's, um, you know, when I uh, joined the organization, um, it came, it was personal for me. So obviously, the women I work with at NAPOF, it's personal to them, because they are women, or because they're a woman, and they also identify as Asian American or Pacific Islander. Um, but for me, it's also personal. Um, because, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, Filipino women, immigrant women, um, you know, gave me life. They took care of me. They raised me. Um, you know, I miss my Lola dearly. Um, you know, she in many ways is my first mother figure um, because my mom was always working when she came um, to America. So um, it's, you know, working at NAPOF is, uh, is close to my heart. It's also because I think women will always need a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow, right? Okay. And uh, well, um, one last word because before we take off. Um, thank you, Veronica, for inviting me on. I, I hope uh, you invite us again. We'd love to tell you um, all the great things that NAPOF is doing. Uh, we have a big year next year with the election. So NAPOF is on the ground, knocking on doors, getting more Asian American Pacific Islander women to vote. And um, if they're not voting already, um, helping them register to vote so they can participate um, in, in the life of our country and, and, and in democracy. Well, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Randy. Mr. Randy Bunau for gracing our show today and please, how uh, keep us updated uh, about this um the the surreal the what they call hill uh hill yeah. projects um uh, yeah. I, I mean advancement encourage all your viewers to if you're not already signed up visit napoff napwf.org and sign up for our emails to get the latest news and updates but we'll certainly keep you updated too veronica so thank you thank you marami salamat sa yo randy Okay. Thank you. All right. And bye now. And mar maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. Ako po si Veronica. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye.
We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo! Good afternoon, this is Bridget Karina Quetta bringing you this week's local news from our community. As even more non-citizens arrived in Chicago over the weekend, some are calling for changes to the nation's border policies to help ease the burden and to avoid the use of tent cities. Major cities across the country have dealt with millions of non-citizen arrivals over the past couple of years. Chicago has seen nearly 14,000 arrivals in the past 12 months who have been scattered across the city living in police stations, hotels, and YMCAs, among other places. Twelve more buses arrived over the weekend, according to WGN. Paul Vallis, who finished second to Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson in the 2023 election, said there needs to be more attention paid to securing the southern U.S. border. You need to be cooperating with the federal government on enforcing immigration laws. That will help slow the number of individuals coming to the city, Vallis said. Representatives of the 80th Annual Holiday Folk Fair International, America's premier multicultural festival to be held on Friday, November 17th through Sunday, November 19th, 2023 at the Exposition Center at Wisconsin State Fair Park in West Allis, Wisconsin, announced the event's 2023 theme, Celebrate the Culture of Traditional Dress. Traditional dress encompasses garments, jewelry, and accessories rooted in the past, worn by a specific group of people. Holding a special place in the cultures of the world, traditional dress will never go out of style, as it promotes both a sense of diversity and inclusion. Traditional wear is a symbol of one's cultural heritage, communicating traditions, values, and beliefs. Wearing traditional clothing is a tangible way to see the culture as it is maintained, preserved, and passed down from generation to generation, said Paul F. Trebian, president and CEO of the International Institute of Wisconsin, producers of the event. Illinois is the U.S. state ninth most likely to snoop on a partner who they suspect is cheating, with 38.9% of respondents admitting that they are guilty of spying on their partner. They are behind the top relationship sleuths in Alaska, with 45.5% of respondents admitting to spying on a partner. That's according to BonusFinder.com, who surveyed 5,000 Americans and uncovered the states that are most likely to spy on a partner and the most popular method for snooping. Here are some of the study highlights. Just under two-fifths of Illinoisans admit to stalking a partner they suspect is cheating. Illinoisans are most likely to check their partner's location online, with 25.3% admitting to doing so. Illinoisans are equally likely to check their partner's social media accounts. Nearly one-third of Illinoisans stayed together when they were cheated on. People from Illinois are most likely to track their partner's location online, with nearly two-fifths admitting to doing this. A favorite method of the state, Illinoisans come above the national average for online sleuthing. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle announced $3 million in funding today for the Cook County Sun and Save program, an initiative led by the county's Department of Environment and Sustainability. Cook County has partnered with the Smart Energy Design Assistance Center, which is a collaborative effort between the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and 360 Energy Group to establish this program. Cook County Sun and Save installs solar photovoltaic systems at no cost for income qualified homeowners throughout Cook County. This program makes solar installations more accessible for eligible Cook County residents. Installing solar helps reduce carbon emissions, utility bills, and barriers to clean energy for residents. 
The largest barrier residents face when choosing whether or not they can afford to install solar is the upfront costs, said President Preckwinkle. Illinois residents can expect to pay more for property insurance premiums this year, according to a recent report, citing a 20 to 30 percent spike since the onset of 2022. As reported in the Wall Street Journal, Illinois is one of six states with the steepest increases. Tornado-prone Illinois has joined extreme weather targets like Texas and California on the list that was compiled with info from S&P Global Market Intelligence. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for watching Chicago Philippine Reports TV. We hope you will stay safe and enjoying this day with your family and friends. I'm Maria Gurley Pascual. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay and we'll see you back here next week.